Hello everybody and also a warm welcome from my side to this Immobility Symposium 2021. My name is Dirk Grossman. Over the last couple of years when running the symposium, we always had the ability to give the latest information from ISO standardization on 1511.8. And this year it is my pleasure to give you the insights from the standardization, what has happened over the past years and what to expect from us this year. So looking forward to share this information with you. So what's new on ISO 1511.8? That's what I brought uh, to you and this is how we go today. So first of all, a short recap on the first generation. This is our starting point. Then an outlook to the upcoming generation two and then some background information about what's going on in the standardization body. So if we look at the various charging systems, the combined charging system is really one of the unique ones if you compare it with all the others. Um, obviously, we have the separation between the AC and the DC charging on um, the, the connector side and obviously we have the combined charging system so either type 1 or type 2 that combines both the IEC part on the upper side and the DC part on the lower side knowing that there is GPT and there's Jademo and there will be maybe some joint approach with or there's a joint approach with Chao Chi we have to see how that goes so this is um, the charging systems that are out there and if we directly look at the um, connector itself, as you can see up on the upper side, as I mentioned, it's the AC part with uh, L1, 2, 3 and neutral and the physical errors. And then obviously the communication pins with proximity and control pilot up here um, on the upper side and the lower part with the two parts are the DC pins here and together this is basically the combined charging connector um, that um, is described here. So if we look at the generation one, what's included? Um, included is the AC charging and the DC charging, as I mentioned, AC single phase or even three phase. Um, we have different identification means. We have also shown these already in some of the earlier presentations in previous years, how that works with uh, EIM and plug and charge uh, types. We have the smart charging part with the power uh, schedule and the sales tariffs. And obviously we have the security um, aspect um, presented by uh, TLS. And um, furthermore, we have the option for the value added services um, uh, in here. So this is uh, what's available today. This is a set of documents um, that's out there that is describing the standard uh, with the Dash one document with the general use cases. Um, dash two, uh, let's call it the software layers. So the network layers and the application protocol itself. And the dash three document with the data link and physical layers and the corresponding conformance test documents in dash four and five. As you see, you can buy them uh, online um, listed here, like for example, in the Boyd um, um, for, uh, for lack. Um, so if we look at the protocol stack itself, so it runs from the vehicle to the charging station as listed here over power line communication. We have the Ethernet part and the TCP IP protocol based on IP uh, v6. Um, and then we have the application protocol with the SEC either for ISO 1511.8 or DN7121. And if we look beyond the charging station, maybe into the charging management uh, system, we have another connection then via OCPP in the WebSocket protocol here, and maybe some protocol like the value added service that's going end to end from the vehicle to the charging station and then it's basically just uh, bridged uh, through the charging station uh, itself. 
So let's look in more detail. Uh, let's make it up in a, in, a, in a DC sequence as the example, how that will work. Um, so the car arrives, um, the cable is plugged in, and then this start transaction is uh, handed over to the backend so that the backend is already aware of that a charging session has started. And uh, this is then basically acknowledged backwards to uh, the vehicle. Secondly, the identification starts um, no matter whether it's RFID or um, certificate based for plug and charge. Um, and this allows then also the back end to authorize the um, user or the vehicle, so to say, and um, um, go from there. And then finally, we can negotiate the charging parameters, so the state of charge or charging limits or the energy amount and so on. And also this information is then as charging parameters handed over uh, to the back end. And the back end, based on this information, is able to deliver one or several charging profiles. Um, that will then allow the vehicle in the next step to select one of these profiles and basically say, OK, this is the one um, I prefer to charge with. And then this is basically the contract between the vehicle and the infrastructure side saying, OK, um, this is the selected profile we both have agreed upon. This is the way we're going to charge uh, for this session. And then the actual charging process starts. The metering values are reported um, to the infrastructure site, um, gathered there and acknowledged there. And that's it. So this is generation one. Now, obviously, the question is, what's new um, in generation two? So let me a little elaborate on this topic here in, in more detail. Um, as you have seen, um, at the moment, we are just discussing AC and DC charging via the cable. So only conductive charging is supported and only in one direction. So from the infrastructure side to the vehicle. So and therefore, some things have been left open, so to say, in generation one, and they are addressed now in the generation two with different um, energy transfer modes, so to say. On one hand side, we have the bidirectional um, power transfer. So that means all, it's also possible to bring energy back from the vehicle or feed energy back from the vehicle into the grid. So either as I said, into the grid or in the local installation, maybe also being your private home and um, yeah, using the vehicle and the battery as a storage, additional storage medium here. Um, so second part is the wireless power transfer. So we don't only have our cable then, uh, we have no connection, physical connection at all towards the vehicle. Um, and doing this obviously we are um, uh, magnetic waves um, and the wireless power transfer here and therefore we also need if we have no direct connection but we need the data communication we also have to have wireless communication and in this case um, as you can see below we have selected um, 802.11n as the also known as Wi-Fi standard here for the physical layer for um, the wireless power transfer. And last not least, you have seen the pantograph here. Um, this is one kind of a automatic connecting device where there is a part in the installation in the infrastructure side that is able to automatically connect to um, the vehicle um, and therefore also special sequences um, are needed so this can be uh, like this case the pantograph charging or this could also be for autonomous electric vehicles that are just driving around, they also have to be charged. And obviously, it would be nice to have some automatic robotic way to also charge this autonomous 
electric vehicles. So these are the main aspects we are focusing on and we are doing this now over quite some years and I've reported and we have reported on the progress over the last years and um, we're going some ups and downs and some hiccups here and there, um, I would say. And at the beginning, obviously, what we have seen, the wireless power transfer has been very popular and uh, lots of people also in the standardization have been very active. And um, we saw this as the, the key part for the Dash 20 uh, document. And um, these aspects have slowed down over the past couple of years. And uh, another aspect has come up with the bidirectional power transfer becoming more and more uh, popular um, and more and more people in the standardization being interested in this part. And so we have more shifted um, we have shifted the uh, focus more in this direction. And over the past, yeah, let's say, half year, three quarters of a year, also the ACD has gathered more uh, interest in this area. So we have gone through some uh, changes or focus things here and never knowing what exactly um, will be the main target um, key part here. And um, this has given us always some headache, um, focus being here, focus being there. Um, so um, we came up uh, with a technical um, solution in order to um, yeah, encounter this problem or yeah, uh, this aspect, I would say, um, because so far we've always considered as you know from generation one that there will be one schema one new schema yeah and um, obviously this is different from what we've seen in generation one so there's no compatibility at all which is okay which is agreed upon everybody's fine with that but <clears throat> now again we have one new schema and at the beginning we focused on WPT, uh, yes, and now we focus more on BBT and things like that, and um, not knowing where that really goes, and then maybe um, some things are more mature than others, um, then we would have to bring, if we finalize the document now, we would have to bring in maybe a, another update very soon, making some changes or adding some new messages because um, they have not been considered in one of the use cases, for example. So this has always given us some headache um, over the last couple of months. And therefore, uh, we came up with a... Um, I think very neat, uh, neat and uh, handy uh, solution here in order to split up the schedule, uh, the, the schema, in order to split up the schema in a way that we have a core part that is used with the message staffs, for example, which is used for all um, use cases. And then we have separate schemas for the individual um, energy transfer types. So for AC and DC, for bi-directional, for WPT, for example. And then at the beginning when negotiating between the two parties, what kind of uh, charging method uh, shall be selected, yeah? then basically this is the way where you select, okay, now I'm doing, for example, bi-directional power transfer. Yeah, and then you take this um, schema for the bidirectional power transfer, and this basically includes then also the core part. And if someone else is doing WPT, okay, then you're just taking the WPT part and the core part, um, which is very handy and also um, gives us the freedom in future uh, times and maybe updates of this document we are able to make changes in WPT, for example, without changing all other parts of the schema, which means yeah, this can still be stay the same, be the same, and will be backward compatible over the last uh, uh, coming over the next coming years. Yeah, so this is really 
the main part that is to be can be expected now um, from the standard here that we have really separated um, the schema so that we are um, more stable i would say for future uh, changes or enhancements in one or the other uh, direction so in what will that result um, so what are the differences now between generation one and two uh, obviously we have a updated dash one document because we have new use cases here and then obviously we have a new network application protocol requirements with a dash 20 document um, we have also introduced some years ago um, with the use cases we have a new physical layer with a dash 8 uh, document for the wi-fi uh, communication and obviously then we have the corresponding conformance tests so dash 9 is already set it's already in work um, for the uh, physical layer conformance test and then for the application and network protocol these uh, conformance tests still to come will still be worked on first of all uh, we would like to get the dash 20 document out and then the group will start working on the uh, conformance test um, specification for the dash 20. So that's the, the news about the dash 20 part. But as I said, if you're looking at the whole architecture, we are not on our own. So uh, there are lots of other protocols around. I mentioned already uh, value-added services, other charging protocols, but also the connection to the back end via OCPP or maybe in the future with IC 63110. So um, how do we handle that? So first of all, um, ISO is not the um, combined charging system. So ISO 1511.8 is just one part of it. And therefore, um, the organization basically driving the combined charging system is Charin, and China has also uh, given a presentation here in the last years. And um, what is happening over the next years from to ex be expected? So the combined charging system will move towards megawatt charging for applications with up to 4.5 kilowatt, 4 to 4.5 megawatt sorry um, and this so we can also um, go into directions for aircrafts and things like that so and char in is not only automotive industry char in is also the infrastructure side we have the cpos we have the grid providers it's not only europe there are people all over the world from asia from north america so this is really a worldwide organization driving this combined um, charging system and over the past year we have we as the ISO 1511.8 group have now established an official liaison uh, with CharN. So this is really then the close um, cooperation here. And talking about liaison, um, we also have now a, a liaison established with the OCA for the OCPP protocol. So that means the OCA is highly interested in having a liaison with us because they want to enhance the OCPP protocol towards the new requirements that are driven by the Dash 20 document. And their interest is not to wait until you know we finalize the document and it's officially there. So uh, rather than starting um, digging into that subject a little earlier and giving, getting some insights um, prior to the official release and therefore with the liaison um, we are able to share the intermediate um, final draft uh, for example with the uh, OCA and they also have come up with a roadmap how they want to incorporate that changes of the Dash 20 then in upcoming versions of their um, OCPP protocol. And obviously since uh, quite some 
years, uh, actually already as we started, this has always been an ISO IEC working group, the 1511-8, and therefore we always are in close cooperation, also have an official liaison with IEC 63110, um, so that also the infrastructure back end um, side is um, incorporated here. This brings me to the end of my presentation. My name is Dirk Grossman and I'm the convener of 1511.8. So thanks for tuning in and giving me the possibility to share this information with you. In case you have any questions, this is now the time. We open up the live Q&A session, so please drop me any question you have and I'm more than happy to answer. Thank you.